I've been using the macOS Big Sur Beta, excuse me, partner, Big Sur Beta on my Mac Pro since Monday. <laughs> and the more that I use it, the more something feels off. It's not the icons or the menu bar or the battery percentage page and system preferences that's going viral on Twitter. I mean, what is that? No, those things are a little frustrating, sure, but they're not really going to substantively change Mac OS. What feels off is this my mouse. And it's why I'm declaring with confidence that touchscreen Macs are coming soon. And I've got the evidence to back it up. Now, wait a minute. I know you're typing down in the comment section. Did you happen to forget the WW 2018 keynote when Craig Federici said this? And the fact that the Mac and iOS share so much technology has led people almost every year to keep asking us the question, are you merging iOS and macOS? So I'd like to take a moment to briefly address this question. No. <laughs> of course not. Ah, shoot, I forgot he said that. Uh, I guess we'll just end this video. No, I didn't forget he said that, but things have changed since 2018. Let's listen to the second half of his statement. We love the Mac because it's, exp and we love Mac OS because it's explicitly created to, to the unique characteristics of Mac hardware, like the ergonomics of the keyboard and the trackpad. Uh, yeah, that's a good point. The flexibility and displays and storage, and because of the power it exposes. First off, we need to get a small little snag in my theory out of the way. Uh, the fact that Apple said touchscreen Macs were never gonna happen. Now, look, most people will take this back to 2010 when Steve Jobs said the following. Touch surfaces don't wanna be vertical. It gives great demo, but after a short period of time, you start to fatigue, and after an extended period of time, your arm wants to fall off. It doesn't work. It's ergonomically terrible. Many will dismiss this comment and say, look at all of the Windows touchscreen laptops on the market that clearly have demand. Jobs was wrong about that, just like he was wrong when he said creating a stylus or adding a multitasking manager to the iPad would be, quote, blowing it. Under Tim Cook, Apple has added both of these things to the iPad and they are great. Jobs was wrong. But I think Jobs was right about a touchscreen Mac. Somewhat. Lifting your arm up and down to touch a screen can be, in Jobs' own words, ergonomically terrible. But unlike Jobs, I don't think that vertical touchscreens are categorically terrible. They're simply bad when lifting your arm up and down over and over again is the only or the primary way to interact with the device. I'll give you an example of a terrible experience and hey, what do you know? Apple makes it. It's the iPad with smart keyboard folio. With this case, the only way to interact with the iPad in its vertically propped up position is by lifting your arm and poking at the screen, which after 10 to 20 minutes gets really tiring. Now, in an era where the iPad was mostly a media consumption device and very few people did actual work on them, it probably wasn't that big of a deal. But the iPad has evolved and Apple has proved Steve Jobs correct. They did it this year when they began offering cursor input on the iPad via the Magic Keyboard. It is a better experience and it proves that dual input user interfaces can be quite excellent because even with a trackpad, I often still find myself touching things on display. But now it's by choice and not by necessity. More recently, Phil Schiller stated in 2016 when Apple added the touch bar to the MacBook Pro that they had tried touchscreen Macs and quote, absolutely came away with the belief that it isn't the right thing to do, end quote. Surely Mr. Schiller had some good reasoning, right? Uh, not, well, not really. He said they couldn't do a touchscreen on a notebook because Apple focuses on the whole platform and it would mess up desktop Macs because the proposition of a touchscreen on a desktop is, in his words, absurd. Uh, sidebar, it's not. The Microsoft Surface Studio with its zero gravity hinge is fantastic. And I know a lot of artists that would kill to have something like that that ran Mac OS, but that's not really what Schiller said that pissed me off. What pissed me off was that he said that they didn't want to make a touchscreen laptop because it would split their lineup by feature set. And sorry, 
but that's bull crap. Because at least with a non-touchscreen iMac, you could still use a keyboard and a mouse to do nearly everything you could with a touchscreen MacBook display. The touch bar, which is the alternative that Schiller offered, literally locks out features from desktop users because it's not even available. And it does split their lineup, and it's one of the reasons that the touch bar, in my opinion, has largely failed, because it's not consistent across all Macs. Schiller then goes on to say that they'd also have to totally redesign the menu bar for fingers in a way that would ruin the experience for those using cursor devices like a mouse. He said that you can't optimize for both, that it's the lowest common denominator thinking. And I used to believe this was true. With macOS Catalina, Apple announced Catalyst, a tool that would allow developers to write apps that could run on both the iPad and the Mac. And in principle, this was a good idea. If you make apps easier to port, more apps will be ported. The problem? Well, these were all touch-only apps that needed to be optimized for a non-touch interface. Now, some apps, like PDF Viewer, did a really excellent job, and you would have no idea that this was a Catalyst app. It looks and feels just like a Mac app. Other apps, like Twitter, did an okay job, where it mostly feels like a WebView app rather than a Mac app, but it doesn't feel bad, per se. That said, several iOS elements make their way through, like switches, which Apple's human interface guidelines explicitly say should not be used on a Mac Catalyst app when checkboxes could be. And then we have apps like Habitminder, which, sorry, is just terrible. And that's what I feel a lot of Catalyst apps are like. They just look like an iPad app. They got thrown onto the Mac without any modification. Buttons are spaced way too far apart for cursor users. Using elements like date pickers are a joke with a mouse and a keyboard and more. These apps, in Schiller's words, use lowest common denominator thinking. But even though many apps felt like an awkward iPad app that just got slapped onto a Mac, users expressed that it was better than no app at all. And that's pretty sad. Then we've got Big Sur. There are a large number of odd modifications made to the fundamental design principles of macOS 11 that hint at a very touchable future. Most obviously, and perhaps my least good argument, is the fact that all of the default app icons have moved to an iOS-like square, about the same size as a fingertip, and they've ditched their uniquely designed size and shape. Now, maybe this is just for consistency across iOS and macOS, but then wouldn't they make them look the same? Launchpad, which is a feature that never really made sense in my opinion on non-touchscreen Macs anyways, has recently gotten a new icon and renewed attention. The all-new Control Center is basically a direct copy from iOS, and, and certain elements, like the sliders, feel super weird with a cursor. They work like you'd expect, but they're too long, and thus require an odd amount of mouse travel. The distance and padding between icons is frankly a bit bothersome for a precise input device like a mouse or a trackpad. It seems like a regression. Items that were previously closely packed together are now not, like audio output devices and Wi-Fi networks, many of which are buried in submenus so as to provide a larger button to press. Not ideal when you're using a mouse. The menu bar itself is slightly larger than it used to be, with more space in between each individual menu item. But even crazier, there is a hidden accessibility setting to make the menu bar a little bit larger, which was one of Schiller's primary arguments for not being able to add touchscreen support to the Mac. At least on my display, I mean, it leaves more than enough room for a finger. Safari has been redesigned with a bigger tab row and an even bigger address bar row. Yet another odd option when desktop class UI elements can be, and have historically always been, smaller to make room for more content. But the biggest argument for touchscreen Mac is hidden behind a very quick statement that Apple nonchalantly made during the keynote on Monday. As you saw, Macs built with Apple Silicon will be able to run iPhone and iPad apps directly. Starting day one, users can download these apps right from the Mac App Store, and most apps will just work with no changes from the developer. The implications of this are huge, but it goes even a step further than that, because during the State of the Union address after the keynote, Apple announced that all iOS apps, both iPhone and iPad, would be available for Apple Silicon Macs in the Mac App Store by default, and that developers, if they didn't want their apps available for our Macs, would have to actively opt out. Now, on the offset, 
This might sound like a good idea. If your desktop and your laptop and your mobile operating devices all run the same instruction set and code base, well, why wouldn't you allow for cross compatibility to bolster these newfangled ARM Macs with the largest software catalog possible? But here's the thing, I don't peg Apple as a company that would fill their app store with a bunch of broken crappy apps that would significantly diminish the experience for these new ARM Mac users. And without a touchscreen, well, that's what it will be for a lot of apps, crappy. Most games, which remember, will be made available by default on day one, require multi-touch. And the last time I checked, well, a mouse cursor could really only replicate one finger. Uh, technically, the iOS simulator does allow you to perform multi-touch actions by using the mouse cursor and a combination of hotkeys, but come on, you really think that that's what Apple's gonna do for consumers? This is Apple, a company that is obsessed with image and visual polish to a fault. <laughs> and that's why I was a bit confused by the announcement at all. Because think about it, without a touchscreen, the experience of using iPad and iPhone apps on a Mac will be pretty terrible, even worse than the really, really bad Catalyst apps that Apple has been fervently trying to prove can be good. Look no further than the fantastic new Messages and Maps app in macOS Big Sur that are both built on Catalyst. But even with a touchscreen, the experience of using multi-touch apps is not going to be as good as the device that they were natively intended for. Then again, a lot of apps on the iPad seem a bit ill-suited for a cursor, and the experience is often less than stellar. But many people, including myself, and apparently Apple, because they made the thing, believe that less than perfect cursor implementation is better than no cursor implementation at all. The good thing is, is when the cursor implementation does suck, you'll still have a touchscreen. In my dream world, Apple would offer a MacBook like the Microsoft Surface Laptop, a crazy powerful computer that runs a desktop class operating system, but also one that can detach into its own tablet form factor and run iPad OS. So like Windows 10, but not crap. I don't think that's ever going to happen though, because Apple historically has always wanted to sell its users more hardware, not less. And it would also go against them explicitly stating that the two operating systems were not converging. Then again, it's not like Apple hasn't ever lied to us before. My worry is that our really good tablet OS and our really good desktop OS will both turn into two separate crappy hybrid OSs that try to do too much and yet don't do enough. For now, all we know is that iOS apps are coming to our Macs and input options are good. I really think the Mac should have a touchscreen if Apple plans to run these apps unmodified as they've stated. Luckily, visual changes in Big Sur strongly imply that a touchscreen Mac is in the works. And as dumb as slapping a touchscreen on a laptop or a desktop computer is, it's something that people, including myself, have been wanting Apple to do for years. Windows laptops have been doing it, Windows desktops have been doing it, and it's great. It's not perfect, but it's better than nothing. So, what do you think? Let me know in the comments down below if you think the touchscreen Macs are coming, and if so, what models will arrive with touch first. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like. If you didn't, well, that other button seems to work okay too. Thank you so much for watching, and as always, stay snazzy.